So today we're going to continue on the properties of reflections. And we are doing the homework. Um, I gave you the whole packet, but again, we are going to do the homework. Um, you can do it on the online. That probably I would prefer that. But, ooh, I, I did do that. So our objectives today is to graph reflections. and also review properties. Of reflections. I didn't really talk much and I have the video to upload to yesterday's uh, or to Friday's assignment. We really didn't talk much other than a few vocab words. So today we're actually going to get more because I wanted you to try doing that um, explore activity, which again, very few of you did do your homework. So that's going to be another zero showing up on school loop. So let's go back to that idea of let's do the reviewing and let's go through that word congruent. Now, how you guys presented this to me was that it was the same shape, same size. So we understand that if it's a, we can't change from a triangle to a circle and say they're congruent. Okay. And we actually can't go from a right triangle to an isosceles triangle and say they're the same. They have to be exactly the same shape. And most of you got, understand that piece. It was what does same size mean? So we're going to add to that. Corresponding sides have equal lengths. So in your explore activity, the length of AB was the same as the length of A prime, B prime. Um, Jacob, we're taking notes in our spiral. That's your job right now. Your spiral should be at your desk. Okay. But in addition, corresponding angles. have equal measures. And again, there is some pre-knowledge I'm, I'm assuming you guys are coming in with, and it seems like you kind of were taught some vocabulary, but you may not have understood it fully. So I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. When we talk about congruent and we talk about same size, that tells us that corresponding sides are congruent and it tells us that corresponding angles have equal measures. All right, so let's add one more piece that related back to um, something that should have come up during that uh, explore activity that you guys did for homework on Friday. That in a reflection, Each point and its image. Remember the original guy is called a pre-image, Jacob? Where we moved to is called the image. So each point and its image are the same distance from the line of reflection. Okay, so that's that was a big where you were measuring lengths. And there is a second um, explore activity you guys could try on your own, but it also has you measure angles. Okay, uh, you can check that out on your own if you'd like to. All right, so I'm going to bring out my graph paper, and I'm going to recreate that, uh, and you can create your own. Uh, we went to six 
on our axes. So you're going to want to make six tick marks. Label your axes X and Y. Don't forget arrow caps. I'm going to label every other number. It was kind of that, that's what I don't like about in the packet is that they have big gaps between the numbers. Like 0 to 6. And again, the reason why graph paper is so good is so that we can keep these interval spacings exactly the same. So I'm going to draw in triangle ABC that was given to us, and they did not tell us the dimensions, but it was pretty easy to figure out. Uh, for one thing, A was 3 above C, and C was at 2, so 3 above that would take us to 5. And then B was at 6, and that's 5 away from the C. Bless you. And then they asked us to reflect over the x-axis. So we're going to actually reflect down, and we're going to be the same distance. C was to above the x-axis, so C prime is going to be to, you know what, I'm going to use a different color for my prime shape or my image. Okay, so C prime would be two below. The x-axis, B was 2 above, so B prime would also be 2 below. And then A lined up with C, and it was 5 away, 5 above the x-axis, so A prime's got to be 5 below the x-axis. So we get uh, 2, 4, negative 5. So there's my A prime. So what I want to do is go back to our original, our pre-image, and label out the ordered pairs. So A was at 2, 5. B was at 6, 2. And C was at 2, 2. Now let's list the coordinates for A prime. Where's A prime located at? It's located at 2, negative 5. A prime. Where's B prime located at? 6, negative 2. And where's C prime located at? Okay, so here's what we need to keep in mind. We reflected, uh, the line of reflection was the x-axis. Look at your ordered pairs. What in the ordered pairs stayed the same? Isabella? The x, not the x-axis, but the x-coordinate is what we call it. So, what stayed the same were the x-coordinates were the same. And then what would, how would you describe the y-coordinates from the pre-image, the black one, to the image, the pumpkin-colored one? Okay. okay, so we, what's a word that means a sign change? Anybody know a word that means you change your signs? Oh, no. That's an operation. You guys haven't heard the word opposites? Okay. Well, then you haven't been listening because that's been taught to you when you've been told to do opposite operations and whatnot. The y-coordinates are the opposite sign. So let's make a prediction. What if the line of reflection is the y-axis? What do you predict will happen with the x-coordinate, and what do you predict will be 
at, with the y coordinates. I'm going to abbreviate coordinates to chords. No, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be one. Okay, what's going to happen to the x coordinates? Um, the x coordinates are going to change from positive to negative, and the y coordinates are going to stay the same. So x coordinates will have opposite signs. Yeah, and the y will be the same. And the y coordinate would be the same. All right, so let's try it out. So according to this, you're supposed to go to the left of the y-axis, the same amount that we had gone to the right. So c was 2 to the right, so c prime would be 2 to the left. Now b prime was 6 to the right of the y-axis, so b prime has got to be 6 to the left. a was 2 to the right, and we've got to make a to the left, so put him up. So a prime is going to be up here. So let's double check what our coordinates are. Let's see, a is at negative 2, 5. B prime is at negative 6, 2. C prime is going to be at negative 2, 2. Did our prediction hold true? Compared to our pre-image, did we get opposite sign on the axis when we reflected over the y-axis? And did the y coordinates stay the same? Yeah. So that seems kind of interesting. So whatever axis we're reflecting over, that coordinate doesn't change. Okay? It's the other coordinate that changes to the opposite sign in a reflection. And that's how we get that mirror image shows up. So we're keeping the same distance away from our line of reflection. Our coordinates are only going to change by a sign, not by a number value, okay? When we're reflecting over an x-axis or we're reflecting over a y-axis, okay? So, that's all I have for notes. You guys have questions on this? So, if we define, like, the, um, the coordinates for uh, a shape or uh, pre-image after it's reflected? Actually, let's go one more. Let's go ahead and let's take a... Um, a graph with a pre-image, follow the directions of where we're going to uh, take it to. I'm sorry, is it bad that we go over something else? No. Okay, so let's not make grief about it. So let's do this. Let's do a practice problem where you're going to be given a triangle and I'm going to tell you the coordinates x is at 1, negative 3, and y is going to be at, uh, let's see, 4, negative 1. Let's have z at 6, negative 5. And let's go ahead and reflect this over the uh, x-axis. Oh, let me try that again, sorry. Reflect. So again, if we're going to reflect over the x-axis, what's the prediction that's going to happen to the coordinates? If we reflect over the x-axis. David, what do you think is going to happen? So let's do this again, and let's see if we're right. So we need to have a lot of negatives. So we're at, I'm going to put in tick marks.
So we're at 1, negative 3. That's our x. Our y is at 4, negative 1. And our z is at 6, negative 5. So I'm just going to follow what David said. I'm just going to change signs for our a prime, or x prime, y prime, z prime, and see does it look reflected. So let's do that guy in this bright color. So we're going to think that we get 1, 3. y prime would be at 4, 1. And z prime would be at 6, 5. So now I'm going to graph those. There's the x prime. 4, 1. That would be our y prime. 6, 5. That would be our z prime. Does that look like a reflection? Uh-huh. All right, we got one, uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> sure does. All right, I think we've got this figured out then. All right, that's it. So...